Now before we learn how to create a database, which is what we're going to be doing in the next training video, I want to emphasize the four objects that you'll be finding in most access databases, well at least what we're going to be putting into ours, and as you recall, let me go ahead and open up my database, my exercises folder in my books database, double click on that, are tables, queries, forms, and reports. Now in access, without any tables, it's useless. You don't have any data because all the data are going to be stored in tables. For example, I've got the books table. I've got my data for the books. I have these fields, book number, title, and book price. And all these fields combined make up a record. So how many records do I have in this table? Well, you can count them up by moving your mouse, one, two, three, or better yet, come down here to the navigation bar, and it says I have one of ten records. And I can go ahead and use the buttons to advance from one record to the next, or of course I can go ahead and click and move around that way, or I can come down here in the field, delete the number, it's not going to delete the record, but what I can do is go ahead and replace that number with, let's say let's go to record 2, type it in, hit enter, it takes me right to the second record. And then when I want to add more records, I can just go ahead and come down here and in this blank cell start typing, but we'll learn that in a later training video. For right now, I want to emphasize that you have a table of data, okay? We have one on books, we have one on customers, we have one on orders, all the data that we need that we want to keep track of in our database, but in separate tables. Books in one, customers another, and orders in another table. And then I'll show you later on how to link all that up. Because when it comes to uh, pulling out information, like for example, let's say I want to query or question and find out bits of information that I have in my books table, I don't want to pull up the entire books table, just certain parts of it. For example, let me double click and open up the query. I've got book number and title. As you recall in the book table, I have also book price, but I didn't have that in my query, which is nice, because I don't want to come back to the books table and delete that field. If you delete it, it's permanently gone. Don't want to do that. So what we want to do instead, let me go back to the query here, is just say, look, I just want to see these fields, not all of them, just these two. Not only that, but in queries, you can set criteria. You can say, look, of all the books, I just want to see the books that are numbered between 412 and let's say 5,000 or, well, maybe something smaller, maybe like 420, and then it'll just display those without pulling up all the books, which is really inefficient because if you have hundreds or thousands of records, it's going to take some time to pull that information up. It kind of slows it down. Plus, if you have to scroll through it all to get the exact numbers that you're looking for, yeah, what a waste. In any case, that's the purpose of the query. And again, the query is based upon the data that's contained in your table. So moving along, we've got our forms. Let me go ahead and double click and open up that. Now you can enter your data either into the table, which is what we have here by adding a new record, or you can create a pretty form. It's basically a table with a facelift. In other words, when you enter in records into a table, it's from left to right. But in a form, you can take these fields here and move them all over the place you can control a user's input. You can say, look, the first thing I want you to input is the book number. If you don't have that, then don't even save the record, which you can control in tables, but it just looks a little bit more organized when I can start with the most important thing up at the top and then maybe section it off and saying this is the book number, title, book price, and then maybe have another section here for the order, another section here for the customer's information. See, I can control where I want and emphasize what data needs to be put in first or to be focused on. So what we enter in here is going to dump it right into the tables. Well, it's based upon the book, the books table. The query, which is based upon a table here. And a query can be based upon more than one table. So that's kind of nice. I can actually base the form upon this query. And that query can be based upon these two tables. So I can have all the information being pulled back into this uh, one form and be able to view it and also enter in the records to be able to distribute that into a query that's covering two or more tables. And we'll discuss that later. So forms based upon tables, queries based upon tables, also reports. Let's go ahead and open up the books report. And there you go. When you need something that's printable, that looks nice, go ahead and design the report, this object here, and you see how it's laid out just all pretty. It's a printable form. So I can go ahead and print that off and hand it out at my meetings and saying, okay, here's what we're selling for uh, the year 2011. So as I mentioned, if we didn't have tables of data, none of the data would be pulled in here. It would be empty. So having said that, let me go ahead and close out of all these tabs here. I can either click on the X or I can go ahead and right click on one of the tabs and say close or I can right click and say I want to close all. One last thing I want to cover is if you look at the names of these objects, 
They all begin with a three-letter prefix like tables, TBL. I mean, that makes sense, right? TBL, table, QRY query, FRM form, RPT reports. You might look at that and say, okay, that's a bit redundant. I mean, if it's grouped in forms, why do I have to have a prefix that identifies that that's a form? Well, later on, when we get into the design mode of our forms and reports, well, let me show you right now. I'm going to go ahead and open up the report in a double click, and I'm going to go ahead and right click on the tab and go to the design view. Because what you see here is the front end view for the front end user to print off, but we have to design it, right? So in any case, let me to go to the design view. Now this report is going to be based upon the book's table. So let me come up here and click on the property sheet. The source, the records are coming from, is the book's table. Let me click on the drop down arrow. So when I'm designing this report, if you'll notice, if I didn't have those three letter prefixes, I would have, let's see, one books and two books. I wouldn't know which one's the table, which one's the query. Because maybe in the query, I'm only pulling in certain fields or just those things that meet a specific criteria and not all of the records. So that could be a mess. So that's why you want to go ahead and anytime you create an object and save it, give it a name of course, but also be sure to put in the uh, three letter prefix for the name of the object, TBL for table. That way again on the back end, we know where it's pulling from when we want to pull the records in for this report, maybe from the query books or from the table books, okay? Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.